Okay, YouTubers, let's finish up service work on the uh, ZSR54 Land Pride Zero Turn Lawnmower for this series of the video. Um, yeah, we got the air filter changed, oil changed, oil filter changed, hydrostats left and right, oil and filters changed on them. That's all done, been test ran. That's all good, no major leaks. We're good there. This, uh, this uh, part two, we're going to take and uh, change spark plugs on the motor. Got two spark plugs to change out. This is a two cylinder. We'll change spark plugs out. And we'll finally change out the belts for that runs from the motor to the mower deck and from the motor to the individual hydrostats left and right change those out I'll kind of point out and show you those things some little steps to do and uh, then we will lastly grease it uh, grease the mower deck there's three spindles on this mower deck grease all them up grease the front axles and the pivot points on the deck there's four or five six points on the deck to grease two front spindle wheels that takes care of the greasing. Be good to go there for a while. And then uh, I'll set the air pressure. Recommend 10 to 12 pounds in the rear, 10 to 12 pounds in the front. Get my air pressure set so that's all good. And we'll go from there. And as for the mower deck, there's not nothing really underneath there. And I'm not going to pull the blades off right now and clean them up and sharpen them up. They're super sharp or sharper. And here's my reasoning. All right, all winter, and last fall, so I stopped mowing. Uh, trees, you know, they've dropped little branches, limbs, whatever. So I gotta clean the yard up, go out and pick up the worst of the sticks and stuff. And also, from when I've cleaned snow out of the driveway, there's possibly the rocks laying out in the, the grass yard area. So I'm gonna hit that stuff with the deck. And I really, oh, it's something I picked up from my dad, I guess. Uh, you know, we don't sharpen the blades up first go around or two just to make sure that all that stuff has been hit, blowed out of the yard, or picked up out of the yard. And then once that's done, hey, we're good. I'll pull the blades off, sharpen them up. Actually, I've got three sets of blades for this beast, besides what's on it, so... I'll just sharpen a set of blades, swap them out, and we'll go again. Uh, so on that note, hang in there. We'll get to work on part two. Okay, YouTubers, we're going to do the spark plug part now. And uh, so I had to look up what the spark plug gap recommendation was for the motor on that Land Pride motor, uh, mower, which is a Kawasaki... Uh, FS9 uh, scratch that back it up try again it's actually an FS 691B uh, Kawasaki engine uh, model engine so and it recommends uh, 0.8 millimeter to as close a gap as a 0.7 millimeter um, which English version it's a 0.031 inch um, is equal to a 0.8 and a 0.027 inch is um, equal to a 0.7 millimeter. Uh, yeah, hundreds, thousands. Um, so yeah, 31 thousands probably, 27 thousands. I don't talk that kind of language at well don't do that much of it but as you can tell there are a couple different tools style tools here have the old trusty in my case rusty because i don't use them much ribbon type filler gauge i've got a little bit bigger set you'll find on the shelves at your auto supply parts stores and wherever i got a smaller set i found somewhere and uh and i got this style here uh, I don't like this one as well because it doesn't have the size I want. Uh, 
for the metric or the uh, standard. But you get the gist of it. You're going to take and, uh, what the hell? Take this one and we'll do the little one. We'll set you up right here. Now, as I've discovered with most things, this adjustment for your spark plug gap, that little gap right there, that's a touchy feely gap. It's a feel, just like it says, ribbon feeler gauge. Uh, it's an it's an achieved ability to feel and tell when you're too tight or too, not tight enough or whatever. But anyway, you're just going to take this little piece right here on your filler, on this style filler gauge. You're just going to put it in there. Check the gap between the electrode right here and the little tab there. Like I said, this, I don't have the right size I need. Now this one here, now yeah, I know it's got a little bit of rust to it. It is a, about 30, 30 thousandths, I believe. So I'm just going to use a side edge on it because it's a clean edge. I'm just going to get my plug set. So anyway, there again, touchy-feely, that's how you set them. Check the setting, and then if you need to, uh, like on this tool here, this thing, where is it? Right here. That little tab right there. You can use it to adjust your uh, little tab there on your spark plug. You can open it, close it, whatever. Uh, but these are close enough, good to go. So on that note, I will get the spark plug wrenches out. And we will pull the pl old plugs up, put new plugs in, giddy up, go. Um, and one good thing is, with this brand of spark plug, on the back they've got a chart. And they recommend foot-pound torque you tighten it back down to once you're done. Uh, all else fails, folks, on the spark plug thing. Google it, YouTube it. Somebody's got a video on how to do stuff right or better than I do. So, give me a few minutes. There's another four or five minutes killed. And I will uh, get that set up and we'll go from there. So hang in there. Okay, folks, I'll drag this out a little longer. I'll drag this out as long as I can. <laughs> I don't really mean to, but I, I am, I know. Um, just my little thing I like to do, I uh, prefer to do with my stuff, my equipment and repairs. Uh, you do what you want there again this is one of those I suggest and you go from there type situations I prefer to use never seize on the threads of the spark plugs now these are original spark plugs I think I've pulled them and cleaned them off with a wire brush a couple times but uh, yeah they carboned up a little bit but you know, that's, that's fine. It's still fired up all right. still ran like a rape tape and all that stuff. But anyway, but yeah, I'll take some never seize, put on the threads just to protect the head on the mower so I don't strip the threads out or when I go take them back out, they don't ruin them, which I should have to do that ever again for as long as I'm mowing with, I hope. Never know. Um, and everything I like to do with electrical stuff is put some dielectric grease on the uh, tip there where the uh, plug wire makes contact with it just to help insulate it from moisture and whatever um, and there again I'm not gonna recommend these manufacturers of products these are just ones I've gotten off the shelf to serve my purpose but uh, there again that's just on my little method of madness um, there's a little quick tidbit for that so Anyway, that being said, the spark plugs are changed, new ones are in place, and the next step's going to be those two belts. These jewels right here. So hang in there, and I'll show, I want to show you something, not only where to undo the tensioners at for these belts, but in order to get to this belt, the 
the drive belt for the hydrostats, you gotta take a little tab piece off that holds the PTO from just spinning with the motor. So I'll show that to you also, and we'll get going from there. So hang in there and I'll show you some more. Okay, YouTubers, here we go again. Next part. All right, I don't know how well it's gonna work out. Anyway, you got your PTO clutch right here for your, to run your mower deck. All right, I don't know how well it's gonna turn out. Uh, <laughs> there's a little tab deal right here. Uh, you take the one bolt out, has an ear down in this PTO to hold it. Right there near that bolt there. Just let it keep that from spinning. But in order to get the drive belt off from the motor pulley to the hydrostats, you got to take this off. And then, of course, take your belt off for your uh, mower deck belts and all that. So, hang on a second. <sighs> Hard to be, heck to be chubby some days. Hang on a second. Get your spun around here. All right. That being said, got to take that off or take the belt off and then take as I showed you yesterday take that tie rod loose that goes to the tensioner sorry about the light and then that's for the drive belts to the hydrostats and then we got to go over here and take that eye bolt loose to loosen that spring tensioner off for the drive belt for the uh, mower deck. But we also have to take this cover, this floor plate, and this cover off in order to get to the belt. So that being said, uh, I'll stop you right there and uh, we'll go from there and I'll show you the end result. But So anyway, hang on and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, let's go over a little bit more on it. What the heck? All right. This is that piece I was telling you about um, that holds that PTO clutch in place on the motor so it doesn't just spin freely take this one bolt loose and uh, it's got a little ear it goes up in a slot on the mower frame and then this right here goes into a spot on the pto and holds it in place yeah we're getting a little bit of wear on that but we're not wore through yet so we'll we'll keep going with it and as you can tell yes i pulled off the one plate where my feet go. Pulled off those safety covers off both sides there. And now I can take uh, this eye bolt here for that spring, tension spring, take that loose so I can get this belt off. And I can take that turnbuckle loose for the other belt, take that loose. Uh, and why are, this is where I'm gonna make a suggestion. You do what you want. But suggestions, suggestions. Here we go. All right. So you don't forget how your belt is threaded if you don't have a manual or somewhere on your mower deck in this instance. Oh, you can see how well you can see it. But right there. Here, try again here. Hang on a second. It's old, it's dirty, but, but anyway, right there. I well, it's going to show, but there's a threading diagram for how the belt goes on my mower deck. An idea of what position the blade should be in when you're putting the blades on it. So if you do not have that in a manual or on your machine some way, because this, this is, goes on for a lot of things. You know, whatever has a belt, 
All else fails, folks. Get your camera out. Get that cell phone out. Get you a picture of how that threads. Easy, quick, simple. And if you so if you forget, you can bring that picture back up and boom, there you are. That's how it threads around those pulleys. Uh, that's just a suggestion there again. I suggest you go from there. And yes, I've used that terminology with people at work a lot at the day job. I've done it with people at my work level. I've done it to my supervisors. I've done it to my managers. I'm just that kind of guy some days. But anyway, that being said, I get to work. So you hang in there, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, YouTubers, I'm making it up as I go, as usual. Clip here, clip there, clip everywhere. Okay, got the belts off. Uh, so most of you guys know the drill. Guys, gals, whatever, you all know the drill. Once you get the belt off, check your pulleys for excess of wobble, play, whatever. Noises, make sure they're good to go. Uh, overall, my pulleys are okay. Tension pulley, idler pulley, all that stuff's good to go. So let's go put the belts on. Now, onto the belts. These are the old belts. This is the drive belt. Uh, overall, it looks okay. I will save it as a spare. I'll throw it somewhere where I can forget I got it. Kind of a hoarder thing sometimes, but always keep it just in case something goes wrong on a Sunday when nothing's open or Saturday after uh, 12 o'clock in the afternoon everything's closed but I still want to get the mower home get the mowing done so at least I can at least drive it somewhere if I have to so that belt will save now this other big belt this is the belt that drives the deck and right there Right there is why I'm changing that belt. Uh, like I said, the belt's probably five years old or so. And it was due. There's, here's another crack spot there. Big old crack through all the V-belt part of it, back almost to the outer part. So, as a preventative measure, um, doing preventative maintenance type work, I'm trying to prevent me from myself from having downtime at a later date when I gotta get my yard mode and because this thing has gone down I cannot get my yard mode so all right there's another couple minutes of that little segment killed of uh, my method of madness and why I'm doing what I'm doing so let me get her stop you here I'll get my belts back on and then I will show you that end result and we'll try to close the video up then. So hang in there. Just hang in there. I'll be down here in a few minutes myself. All right, YouTubers, it's time to wrap this thing up. I am done. Uh, yep. Got the belt on, new belt on for the deck. I got the new belt on for the hydrostats, tension set. Uh, it's where I think I need to be. Uh, new belt on this deck is a little tight. I feel a little weak. Had to cheat and get a ratchet strap, one of them small ones, and hook on that there spring and go over here on my gator and hook on that, this right here. Pull that spring tight enough to go I get back on the... Uh, on that eye bolt and uh, go from there but uh, yeah everything's greased up greased up the all three spindles um, the four pivot points for the deck itself and then there's these two brackets here they've each got a grease point under here uh, on the deck so well, that's greased up. My front axle is greased up. Oil's changed. Air filter's changed. We are serviced and good to go for hopefully another, well, 25, 30 hours roughly on the motor oil. Maybe a little longer. Um, 
about 50 hours for greasing on the deck, 100 hours on the wheels. But usually when I grease the deck, I grease the wheels. Uh, grease the spin blade spindles on the deck and all that. But anyway, I don't need to go in, over any of that with you. So I'm going to shut this video down here. If you stuck out this whole uh, series of clips, thumbs up to you for sticking it out. I appreciate you. Uh, as always, uh, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one. So that's what I'm going to show you next time, but I'll see you then. Y'all take care.